To narrow the income gap, the government will spend $9 billion over the next five years on lower wage workers. Older workers will also be supported for their retirement. At the same time, help will be given to businesses as they bear the brunt of these labour costs in the short term. Gwyneth Cho tells us more. Over the next two years, Singapore's progressive wage model for lower income sectors will be extended to workers in retail, food services and waste management. To help such businesses cope with the transition, the government will fund a $2 billion package. I recognise that some firms may need time to adjust to these changes. Some have locked in long-term contracts based on certain wage assumptions and now face higher manpower costs. Others may find it difficult to raise prices in the short term to support the wage increases. Calling it the Progressive Wage Credit Scheme, the government will co-fund wage increases for five years. The first tier of support is for those hiring workers earning up to $2,500 a month. The government will co-pay half the wage increase for this year and next, 30% for the subsequent two years and 15% in 2026. The second tier is for employers of those earning between $2,500 and $3,000 to support them in light of the immediate economic uncertainty. This will last three years and will be at a slightly lower percentage than the first tier. Another scheme will also be enhanced to benefit more than half a million workers. The Workfare Income Supplement is paid directly to lower-wage workers to boost their earnings and CPF savings. And from next year, more will benefit. That's as the qualifying income ceiling will be raised to include those earning up to $2,500 a month. Younger workers from 30 to 34 years old will now also qualify for workfare. They will receive a maximum of $2,100 a year to help them cope with expenses and start saving for retirement. Overall, maximum payouts will increase, with younger age groups seeing the greatest jumps. But those 60 and above, as well as all persons with disabilities, will qualify for the highest maximum payouts of $4,200. And to encourage part-timers and casual workers to take up full-time work, they'll now have to earn at least $500 to qualify. Through the combination of progressive wages and workfare, we expect the incomes of our lower wage workers to grow faster than the median wage growth over the coming decade. So as our economy grows and society progresses, we will reduce income disparities in our workforce. Older workers will also be more prepared for retirement. For the next five years, every cohort turning 55 must have larger basic retirement sums. Each batch must have 3.5% more than the previous one. Hence, payouts will increase accordingly. And workers aged 55 to 70 will continue to see an increase in CPF contributions with companies receiving support to do so.